I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, I'm going to tell you about taking lipos through airport security. It's not as big a deal as many of you seem to think. Stay tuned. I've been on a trip to New York, uh, going to the New York City Drone Film Festival, and I brought my drones along, and along with them, I brought a whole bunch of other stuff, including lipos. I brought a bunch of lipos. In fact, I brought a bunch of lipos. And, and people say, well, how do you get that through security? The regulations for taking lipos through airport security are actually pretty simple. Let's take a look over at the FAA's, always go to the source, right? Don't, don't trust me. Go to the source. This is the FAA's page on taking lipos onto airplanes and by, by extension through airport security. Uh, and the first thing people ask is, can you take them on the plane? Isn't that dangerous? And actually the FAA mandates that you take them on the plane. You may not put lipos and lithium ion batteries in your checked bags. If you do that, you're doing something unsafe. They don't want a situation where a lipo lights off in your check bag and sets the whole plane on fire. If a lipo is gonna light off, they'd rather have it light off in the cabin where at least people can know and I don't know what, throw that bag of sand that they carry in the plane on top of the lipo? I really have no idea. But they don't want it to start a fire in the cabin, in the, in the cargo compartment and get out of control, okay? So you have to take your lipos with you onto the plane. Great. That's what you'd probably rather do anyway. You probably don't want to check them. I don't know. But regardless, you don't have a choice. If you have lithium ion batteries in your carry-on bag, and then you're forced to gate check the bag, right? This is something that you guys who fly out of great big cities don't know anything about because you have tons of overhead space. For people who fly out of small airports like me, the little airplanes often don't have enough overhead space, and you have to gate check the bag. You check the bag into the cargo hold at the gate instead of at the counter. If that happens, you have to take your lipos out of the bag and take them onto the plane with you. You cannot let your lipos get on into the cargo hold. Now this covers spare lithium batteries, such as the lipos for your drone, such as naked 18650 cells, such as a spare laptop battery, if you've got any of those. It doesn't refer to lithium batteries that are installed in objects. So if you have an appliance, if you have a DVD player or a screen with a lit lithium battery installed in it, it doesn't apply. And the reasoning behind that, I think, is that a spare naked battery is more likely to be a safety risk than something that has been installed inside like your cell phone or something in, a, in an appliance where the manufacturer has taken certain safety considerations into account. There are size limits on the maximum size of battery you can take. And this is actually a little bit confusing until I make it make sense for you. So the, the restriction is up to two grams of lithium for a lithium metal battery, which is not what you have, or up to 100 watt hours per lithium ion battery. And the question goes, how many watt hours is your battery? Well, I'll tell you how I think they calculate that. I've, I've looked up specs for batteries, and as near as I can tell, they calculate watt hours where did you go? I've looked up specs for batteries, and as near as I can tell, they calculate watt hours based on a nominal 3.8 volts per cell, which means that if you have a 4S battery that is 15.2 volts, and then you're going to multiply that by the milliamp hours of the pack. So if it's a 1300 pack, that's going to be 1.3 amp hours. And you can see that is 19.76 watt hours. I was a little confused when I saw this at first because you know that four that 4S pack can actually have as many as 4.2 times 4 times 1.3 amp hours. It can really have 21 watt hours of energy in it. But as near as I can tell, everybody who talks about bat lipos and watt hour ratings is talking about the nominal voltage not the max charge voltage. Regardless, you should transport your batteries at storage voltage. Don't transport your batteries fully charged. Uh, th that's the safest thing to do. There's no reason to have a fully charged battery. If it does light off, it will have more energy. It will be more dangerous. Uh, th the safest thing to do would be to fully discharge them, but of course that would damage the battery. So transport them at storage voltage. Uh, by using this logic then, if the maximum we can have is 100 watt hours, if we then divide that 
by your packed nominal voltage. So for a 4S, that would be 15.2 volts. You can see the maximum size 4S you can carry would be 6,500 milliamp hours. No battery larger than that can be carried onto the plane. So if you have a big 10,000 milliamp hour 5S, you may not be able to legally carry that onto a plane. But if you have anything up to a 6500, you're good to go. And if you want to do that math for yourself, take 100 watt hours divided by the nominal voltage. So for a 3S, it would be 12.6. And that's the maximum milliamp hours that the pack can have to stay under this regulation. There actually is an exception. You have to get airline approval and you can carry up to 160 watt hour pack to cover certain large aftermarket laptop batteries and professional AV batteries. I have never done this. I've never had a battery big enough to deal with this. But if you have, let's just do the math on that real quick. 160 watt hours divided by, uh, let's say, 15.2. That's a 4S. That would be a 10,000 milliamp hour 4S. If you have a battery up to that big, you may get special airline approval. But it seems like that's kind of tempting fate, you know. All you need is one security guard who doesn't know or doesn't believe in your, in your permission, and then you're kind of boned. Now, there is not any maximum quantity limit. So that's why I have 20 batteries in there. As long as each one is small enough, you can carry as many as you want. However, you cannot have more than two of the extra super duper large ones. The batteries must be protected from damage. This is uh, open to interpretation. I carry my batteries in a soft sided case. In this case, they're being carried inside the low pro quad guard. And I consider that to be protected from damage. The exact meaning of this depends on who you get and on what day you get it. I've never had this be a problem. I, the worst that's ever happened to me going through security is that they swab them to see if they're explosive, but usually they just look at them and they pass them through. So if you decide how much risk you want to take, that somebody is going to say, these are not sufficiently protected from damage and not let you through. The battery terminals must be protected from short circuit, which means the terminals must not be able to come into contact with other metals. The exact way that you do this, again, depends on how much risk and how much hassle you want to go through. Uh, the safest thing to do is to put a cover on the XT60. However, I have many times transported the batteries alone by themselves inside a bag with no cover on the XT60s, and I've never had a problem with it. I would make the argument that since there's no exposed metal inside that bag, they cannot come into contact with metal, and they're good to go, and no one has ever challenged me on that. And that's it. Those are the regulations. It's actually not that complicated. And for those of you who are scared about the first time you do it, I, I have done it several times. Don't do it a lot. I don't travel with my quadcopters a lot. But I've done it four or five times, and every time it's completely smooth. Take the bag that contains your batteries. Take your batteries out of your carry-on bag. Set them separately onto the conveyor belt and let them go through. And if somebody raises a question about it, probably they're just going to say, oh yeah, it's batteries. They might swab them to see if they're explosives, and they won't be, and you're good to go. Most of the time, though, I'm right through security. Nobody even gives it a second look. It's not scary. It's not a big deal. They've seen it before. As long as you don't get unlucky and find somebody who's having a bad day and decides to give you a hassle, you, you're probably going to be fine. If you want to buy yourself some insurance, one thing you could do is print that page out. And I'm pointing at my laptop. You know, you don't know that. <laughs> it's over there. Well, you could print that page out and you could carry it with you. But most of the time, these guys know the regulations as well as you do. It's not going to be an issue. The other thing that I need to say, of course, in case it's not obvious, is I'm talking about the United States here. I travel in the United States. I know I do have quite a few international viewers, and your regulations may be different. Um, so if you're traveling outside of the United States, be aware that, of course, every country has their own regulations, and many of their regulations may be more strict than those in the U.S. That's going to do it for this video. If you're traveling with LiPos, don't be afraid. It's not a big deal. Just make sure they are small enough, they're packed safely, and take them out and run them through. You're going to be good to go. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.